and welcome back to Madness in the Method, the podcast where we take a deep dive into the uh, strange career of one Nicolas Cage, and we try to figure out why he is the way he is. Uh, my name is Tobias, and with me is my friend and trusted co-host, Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello. And uh, as you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can listen to this on all major podcast platforms as well. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so on. And if you're listening on any of those platforms, we are, of course, available on YouTube as well. And if you want the uh, episodes in advance, a few weeks in advance, check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene for early access. But you also get commentary tracks, exclusive episodes of my other podcast, The Spoilercast, and much, much more. So please take a look at that. But let's get on with the show. And today we're talking about... The 1995 crime thriller, uh, Kiss of Death. Yeah. It's a um, crime thriller, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, actually um, a remake of a 1947 movie called the same thing, Kiss of Death. Um, I think it's the second remake, even. Oh, that might even be it. Okay. Because I think there was a remake in like 1950 something. Oh, really? Okay. I think so. I am I am vaguely aware of the 1947 version. I haven't seen it, but I've I've read about it. Uh, so that's why I re- when I when I started looking this one up, I'm like, I, uh, I know I know this one, I, but I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, okay. So I I can't really I can't really compare them. Um. But did you know it was a remake before you started watching it? Before I started watching it, yes. Because when I looked it up, I saw that, oh, yeah, there are two. Oh, yes, that's why I recognized it, because I recognized the older one. Mm. Uh, So I knew it was a remake when I started watching it. But I haven't seen the original, so I can't really, like I said, I can't um, Mm. uh, compare them. So so that's that's why I love this movie. Uh, No, I'm kidding. I don't love this movie. (laughs) Um... But had you, had you did you know about this or the original before no, before this? No, no, no idea. Uh, and and I just take kind of take it back. Well, there is not two remakes. I mixed up the facts. Okay. Or else. Uh, but no, I had not heard of not the original or this one. So it was I went in completely blank. I thought it was uh, it was gonna be some kind of cop drama, but it wasn't really. Um. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what I thought this was going to be. I, di- I didn't have any... I didn't even watch a trailer. All I saw were some pictures. I saw Nicolas Cage sp- uh, sporting a, a kicker, a killer uh, goatee. And that Ving Rhames was in it. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But that was yeah. about it. <laughs> I saw the... Because we said last time that I was gonna, we were going to go in completely blind for this one. Yeah. Uh, but I, because I had to get the movie, so I, I was yeah. completely blind. Uh, but I... So I... St- I started just on IMDb reading the synopsis without thinking of it, and I stopped myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So the only thing I actually read from the synopsis was uh, goes undercover with help of of angry detective. (laughs) Uh, So I I thought it was going to be like a a cop, buddy cop thriller. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's sort of what I went in, and that's completely wrong. So I, I went in completely blind. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Well, this, the story is, just reading from IMDb, it's a reformed convict goes undercover with the help of an angry detective to ensnare a psychotic mobster. And, yeah, that is the plot for, like, the last 40 minutes of the movie. But the first almost hour of the movie is... <sighs> It's it's just meandering. Like it starts off with a crime gone wrong. This um, this this convict played by David Caruso, who's just gotten out of prison, from what I understand, or recently got out of prison, is uh, roped into doing a job. We just need your help, man. It's just two hours. We'll pay you double. Just this, this, this last thing, and then you're out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah. Sort please, of please help me. I'm your blood cousin. I'm your blood cousin. Michael Rapport, looking very yeah. young and stylish with a shaved head. <laughs> um. And of course, everything goes wrong. He is he is he's put back in prison for like I think it's three or four years or something. 
I think it's three years. He, I, he gets sentenced for five years, and they say oh, right. he, can, yeah. he can come out in two, but he gets out in three. Exactly, that's what happens. And uh, during his stint in jail, stuff happens. His wife uh, is not starts up a relationship, but it's kind of once again snared into a relationship with Michael Rappaport or something. And then she dies in a car crash, and uh, well, I mean, that's I I would go so far to say it's it's implied rape. Oh, sure, yeah, but I mean, but... it felt like it felt like some time passed from when they start from the the f- initial thing in the bar, and when she actually dies. No, no, that's the night. That's it's, the, it's that's... just the night after. Oh, okay. yeah, it's the more or no, the morning after. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, up. sorry. The morning after, because she calls the the babysitter right after and says, "Oh, I went back." Oh, and then that's, the babysitter right, that's right. Tells the um, Crusoe, uh, Jimmy Kilmartin, uh, yeah. t- tells him uh, that she didn't. She said she was going to come home. Right, but, right, right. And I was getting a ride from well, Rapport's character. That's but true. She, she never did come home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, and then we, we, we get some glimpses of the other people involved in that initial um, uh, crime. I don't even know what they're, – they're, they're transporting cars somewhere to something. I didn't – honestly, I didn't pay the most attention to this one. I kind of <laughs> okay. went in and out of it. Um, I'm I'm nursing a cold right now. So, uh, uh, But, you know, so did, did they specifically tell you, tell you what they were doing in the beginning? Uh, so – from what I get, not not from the beginning, but you get, I at least understood it during the movie, but then they no, they never explain it. Yeah, okay, but sure. It's sort of so they steal cars and then they switch the plates and then they say and then they because they do that at least once in the movie. Then they they switch the plates with a junk car. From oh, a junk sure, car. and then they blow up the old car. Yeah, but they can take so, out the the insurance on the new car. No, not insurance. It's just that then uh, it's clean. The the, oh, the okay. car is clean from then on. Yeah. And then they sell it to whoever wants to buy it. Sure, sure. Uh, so they steal luxury. It's sort of like the Gone in Six Seconds, which we're going to come to later. Yeah. Um, they steal luxury cars, make them clean, so to speak, and then resell it. Okay. Uh, and I guess since this guy, Big Junior, <laughs> yeah. it's the weirdest mob name, um... He owns a strip club, so I think this is just a part of the business and not yeah, the entire exactly. business. So I think it's more of a mob thing. We only see one part of the operation. Yeah, because they do, they do sell weapons on the side to Ving Rhames, and they do some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that, that first botched uh, uh, crime thing with the cars, uh, delivering the cars, and then him... F- Spending three three years in jail is almost the first hour of the movie, and it really doesn't feel like the movie actually gets going until he gets out of prison. And that is all just build up to like, okay, now you're out of prison, but you still need to help us to get Little Junior or Big Junior or whoever it is. No, it's Little Junior, Nicholas Cage's character. Yeah, because there's there's this thing he 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 rats on them while in prison. Yeah, because when he's when his wife dies, he correctly. Uh, figures out that Ronnie, his blood cousin, is is to blame. Yeah. Uh, and so he he does this uh thing where he rats people out in the, in a strategic way. So he, without even saying anything, he just puts the blame on Ronnie. Right. Uh, and Ronnie gets Ma- killed. Michael Rappaport. The, yeah, and gets killed by the um Nicholas by Cage. the mob. Well, yeah. Uh, and, and so he feels that he got his vengeance, and here he's done. Uh, but then I don't really understand understood exactly why. But then when he just gets out, the police wants him to get the other one because he won't make it. But I don't understand why he wouldn't make it on the streets. I uh, get that. Yeah, I, I, I think they just want Little Junior as well, Nicolas Cage's character. Yeah, cause... yeah. But why does he feel like he's that he needs to do it? Because they, the cop says something about you won't make it out in the streets, like. For a week, if you don't help us, and I don't really understand why. If they yeah. maybe, if maybe they are hinting on that they were gonna s- actually leak that he was the rat, maybe I don't know. Maybe I mean, it turns out that some of the police people involved or agency people involved are maybe not corrupt, but they're definitely uh, 
Uh, they're sneaky, <laughs> no. so to speak. They like to bend the law. Um, so yeah, so then he goes undercover, so to speak, and tries to to uh, get uh, get little Junior on tape committing crimes. And that's that's more or less the last like forty minutes in the movie. And that part is pretty pretty good. But the first, like I said, it, it's very meandering for the first hour. And I I, mean, I I didn't I didn't I didn't hate it, but I didn't didn't particularly like it. Well, I uh, I didn't mind it at all, really. I didn't even think about it uh, that it was meandering. I, I thought it was it was establishing things and it put motivations, and I, I wasn't really bored or anything. No, but it, it, for me, it felt like the the standard, you know, c- criminal going undercover to help the cops, you know, when he gets out of prison. Then you have you have like your first twenty minutes are establishing him getting out of prison, get, you know, getting the mission to to um, to go undercover, goes undercover, and then spends the rest of the movie undercover trying to f- you know yeah. um, frame frame the big bad guy. Here it was a bunch of other stuff, and then the last act was the going undercover part. Well, yeah, I guess. Um, but I, I I didn't I didn't feel that was I didn't even think about it in that way. Okay. I just because I was just going through it, it like a movie. I didn't think of that it was meandering before it got to the point. I I thought all of it was the point. Because okay. even even when they get <laughs> little Junior, um, <laughs> they because yeah, the big Junior dies and little Junior takes over. Yeah, uh, big Junior yet, being played by Philip Baker Hall, literally literally in one one yeah. scene, and I think Not he speaks like two two, two words. Oh, two scenes. two scenes. Okay. It's also when they're gonna kill Dr- uh, Ronnie. It's also in that. Scene. Oh right. In the backyard. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, huh? But yeah, so because this has like this first, the first segments of the movie. Because I would, I would, if if put it in segments, I was the first segment is how he got roped into the job. Second segment is his part, his time in prison. Third is him trying to set up. Uh, little Junior, and then there has then there's this segment where Junior gets free, yeah. and then comes like the last end of the uh. movie where we needs to get him again, and he also yeah. it goes like with this protection program too for a while. So I think it's, there's a lot of things happening all around. Oh yeah, sure, a lot of things happening. It's just, um, I mean, I I, I like I like a nice structure to my movies, and this yeah, one this sure. one didn't have a classic structure, which isn't a bad I, thing. It's just I. For me, then I lost a little bit of focus. Yeah, I, I I would agree if the movie ended with uh ended when uh well when Omar gets killed. Okay. Uh, if if the movie sort of ended there, which uh, yeah we got him, but high five, end of the movie. Yeah, that would have been very anti climactic. Yeah, I would I would agree because but but since that we have like a lot of story left after he goes. With a wire, there's a lot yeah. of more things. I think it all sort of works together to to uh, acceptable structure. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. I I would say this movie is it's a fine movie. It's okay. I I won't rewatch it. Uh, I probably no. won't remember it in a few years. No. Uh, but it was it was fine. I I don't, I don't have any big issues with it. Uh, it was yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's um um it, it's competently made. Uh I recognize the name Barbe Schroeder, but I didn't I didn't I didn't I don't know from what really. He did uh, just before this one he made um um uh, Single White Woman. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, white female. That's, that's fine. Single yeah, white single, single white female. That's it's an okay yeah. movie. Yeah. Um it was a while since I watched it, but I, I remember it as a pretty good movie. He did Desperate Measures, um, which I think I have seen. I recognize the poster, but I'm not sure. But then he did do um, Murder by Numbers, a Sandra Bullock movie. He's done a lot of, like, crime movies. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nothing... Nothing that sticks seen. out, really. Think about female was the biggest thing I saw in the list. I didn't even think yeah, about it. Yeah, probably. Um, but then, yeah, so, so it feels competently made, but... I don't know. <clears throat> it's something about something about repeating a lot of locations. Like even even you can definitely tell, um, like the the payphone out, outside of the strip club, <laughs> baby cakes. Yeah. You can definitely tell that they filmed all the scenes 
that takes place at that uh, payphone, which is, I think, two or three of them. Mm-hmm. They filmed them all in one day, even af- yeah. like, after each other. Like, they did three setups in, like, four hours and just filmed yeah. all Because it, re- it really, f- I got that feeling, like, okay, this scene, you're, you're really uh, scared to go in there. Okay, we're done. <laughs> this scene, you're really angry at Samuel L. Jackson's cop character. Okay, we're done. This scene, you really need to get a hold of your daughter. Okay, we're done with it. It just felt very rote like that. Um, and then there was something, some of the interiors, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be like a sleazy gangster-owned strip club. So it's, uh, maybe it's supposed to feel a little cheap. But I got I got like a low-budget feeling uh, about some of the scenes. I almost almost got like Deadfall vibes to some of the scenes. I I I felt got the same feeling, but I just chalked it up to being supposed to be a sleazy bar. So yeah, I, sure, I, I, sure. I didn't even think about it in that way. Which is yeah, no, kind because on brand sort of. You have a pretty like pretty pretty good cast. I mean, sure, it's from '95, so I guess Samuel L. Jackson wasn't a household name yet. But we get Samuel L. Jackson. Um, we got Stanley Tucci back from It Could Happen to You. Um, but at this time, they actually have some scenes together. I mean, no. Nicolas Cage and Stanley Tucci never meet. That's true. They don't. Mm-hmm. But he's in the movie. And uh, someone else who was in a movie with him before. Or maybe not. Maybe those were the only two. No, so, yeah, I guess that's the only two he, he worked with. Nicolas Cage worked with before. Yeah. Um, but then we got, like I said, Phil Baker Hall, um, David Caruso, which... That's kind of funny. This was the movie, like, he, he quit TV to start his movie career with this movie. Yeah. And I guess that kind of backfired because he didn't do much, m- many big movies after this. Oh, uh, he, got, he got back to TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, kinda, it's, it's the first trivia that, that pops up. I read that it's, somewhere, like, yeah, this was his, like, his big uh, appeal to Hollywood. Like, look at me, I'm a real actor. Oh. And, yeah, no. Nothing. It is it's weird though, because he's a pretty good actor. He's good, yeah. Um, I just it's weird that he never got a breakthrough. I think. I think he, um, I think he's he's got a specific look to him. Like he's not he's not he's not leading man material like that. He his role in CSI Miami, and maybe it's just because that's where I really know him from. But he's perfect for that role. Yeah. Kind of a, a slightly aloof like. Uh, uh, like genius forensic guy, but <laughs> ca- ca- but kind of quirky with 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 sunglasses. That's that's his thing. Like him as uh, a as a hard boiled gangster or or criminal. Like in this, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I I bought it in this movie. I mean, uh-huh. I, I, he 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 did the acting well. I just didn't buy him as a, a, uh-huh. a criminal like that. Not really. But how how much is that? Because he's seen Caesar in Miami. I mean, that's probably it's probably a lot. A lot of it's colored by that. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, so yeah, I, I think again, I I buy it. I I think he he could have been a leading man, but apparently Hollywood disagrees. Hollywood disagrees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, but uh, yeah. Oh. I, I was just gonna say, I, th- I think most of the actors do a pretty good job. Um, like we said, we have Ving, Ving Rhames as well, uh, Michael Rapport. Uh, Helen Hunt, unfortunately, <laughs> dies pretty early in the movie because she plays, she plays the wife. No. And then Catherine Erb is her sister or his sister? I don't know. Rosie Kilmartin. Oh, no. no that's, she's the no, wife's just... sister, right? No, no, the, no uh, Rosie. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just... Um... Like the neighbor upstairs. Oh, she's just the neighbor. I, oh, okay. Yeah, because she's like she's the because they say that it's just a throwaway line. It's at the beginning. When yeah, he, right in the beginning when he comes in. Oh, coming from from work or whatever. No, when he leaves and he he call, when report comes and he leaves and he oh, calls okay. her and she comes down from the, the upstairs and he says, "Sure, oh, sure, did sorry. I did I wake your parents?" So apparently she lives with her parents. At that right, 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 right. So okay, yeah. And if she was related to anyone, he wouldn't have said it in that way. No, that's true. That's true. So he he marries the nanny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I, but I think I think everyone everyone uh, did a good job, and like that adds to the quality as well. So it, yeah, it, it, it was very back and forth. Like a lot of good actors, but kind of standard direction and and. Uh, 
uh, I don't know, a, a cheap look to some of the scenes. It made me, it made me confused as to like, is this a big project? <laughs> um, I mean, David Cruz who staked his whole TV career on this. Mm-hmm. Um, but and then I mean, he just, I don't know. And a lot of these people, I think, it's got a forty these... million dollar budget. So that's pretty big for ninety five. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of these people are established, respectable actors at that time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Because uh, Stanley Tucci was, or was, because this isn't the beginning of his career, is it? Um, it's, it's it's before he got a lot of leading roles. I mean, he kind of oh. he kind of blew up in the mid two thousands. Oh, I mean, he's right, he's working for all of nineties and part of the eighties, I think. But I don't think it was a household name, really. And Wing Rames? Well, he, the, se- well the year before, he was in, um, of course, in uh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, yeah, right. I'm so, not... people, I'm, I'm pretty sure they filmed this before. I just got that feeling mm-hmm. like this was something he did before. And then it got, maybe not got shelved, but then it's like, oh, he's in this uh, Quentin Tarantino movie. Ooh, he made Rest of Our Dogs. Let's hold off on releasing this a little bit. Because they got Samuel yeah. L. Jackson as well, who was also in. Um, yeah, uh, this is. This is bef- also, this is before. Because this is right before Mission Impossible 2. Cause I yeah, because it's 96. Big, yeah. His, well, I, I think that's his big, like, breakout role, sort of. Mission Impossible. Probably, yeah. Or Pulp Fiction. That or, that or Pulp Fiction, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Samuel Jackson. He, yeah, again, Pulp Fiction was his big breakout. Oh, so yeah. That's, and that's, if that is, this is filmed before, so, yeah, maybe none of these. How did Hunt, I guess? Hell Hunt, Nicolas Cage? Yeah, Nicolas Cage. Um, I'm wondering who is the biggest star in this movie, which is the, like the star, uh, the, the name on the poster, sort of. Well, the name on the poster is David Caruso and Nicolas Cage, because they mm. were they really, like, TVs, TVs, David Caruso, going into movies, that was the big push. Yeah. Um, so that's what they, were, they, what they were going for, you know. Uh, and then Nicolas Cage, because, I mean, he is, he is, at this point, he is established in, in, in Hollywood. Working for over ten years and like doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Helen Hunt. I don't think she either had a break. Because uh, Twister really. was the it year was after this. The year one. after this, yeah. So, <laughs> everything. Everyone broke out a year after this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but again, there's everyone is doing a great job. Sure. Yeah. Uh, definitely. And I, I wouldn't say there's anyone who's really bad in this movie. Uh, no, no, no. And not even Michael Nicholas... Rapport. <laughs> not even Michael Rapport. <laughs> uh, and Nicolas Cage, I, I think he did a good performance in this movie. Uh yeah. Once again, I'm not. I'm not sure he he works as a hard-boiled gangster. I mean, the whole the whole look like like um like uh. Have you seen Face Off? <laughs> well, that, well, then he's like crazy. Um, that's, uh, and then I mean, he's more of a I don't know what he is. He's like a <laughs> terrorist, criminal. He's not really a gangster. Uh, I mean, that's different. But the whole, the whole, uh, the whole goatee wearing like chains, and he's got the the the, the, the tracksuit pants on, and he's doing some sort of like uh, I don't know, some kind of weak ass New Jersey accent. Like <laughs> we go, we got to go back to the garage. I don't know. It felt. I think I think he's he's very very. Very good at the menacing. He does a oh, very menacing sure. job in this movie, and I think he he gets that through the 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 you can't uh, what is the word uh, you can't Unpredict- unpredictability yeah he's yeah. unpredictable um, yeah, yeah exactly sure. unpredictability and the the menacing me and the you can see that this guy's gonna he can break. At any moment. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, and I and I think that's what he's supposed to be because they they sort of talk about that. I think uh, that when big big junior dies, <laughs> that that little junior is gonna be is, is gonna be sort of worse or gonna be mm-hmm. uh, a bad bad way to go, sort of. Yeah. Um, um and, and, I think it sells that, that works. Oh yeah. He, he's supposed to be like a good criminal. He's supposed to be. Yeah, he, crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, he was coast. He was coasting on his dad's laurels. Yeah, but now he has to take over, um, and he's not really fit for it. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and he does the thing he did in the the last movie, 
Oh, wait, what's the last movie? Uh, Trapped <coughs> in Paradise. Trapped in Paradise. Uh, when he when when we talked about this uh, uh, this uh, you can see the rage cage in the eyes. In his oh, eyes. sure, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, but we do we do actually get hit. we get we get a few moments of rage caginess in this one. Um, uh, Philip Baker Hall, Big Junior, dies off screen. And then they just cut, like a few scenes later, they cut to Nicolas Cage jumping up and down <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the strip scene going like, ah ha ha ah, ha ah, ah, ah. You know, if he's crying or laughing. And then he just, like, some guy, like, bumps into him. He just grabs him like, my dad just died! <laughs> there, I got definite Deadfall vibes there, yeah. just because he was in a club like that. Yeah. I, I, I did think the first time we saw him, Oh yeah. I was like, oh, it's going to be Deadfall all over again. When he, yeah, it? when he grabs Caruso by the neck. This, this, yeah. this is introduction. Calm down, calm down. No, he and grabs just, Michael Rappaport. Sorry, Caruso. Yeah, and, like, calms and, him and down. then now Caruso takes his arm. Let go of Tip, my arm. Let go. Yeah, let go. Of my arm. It's just yeah. it's, oh, it's going to be that again. And we saw the, how he how he looks. It was also sort of oh yeah yeah yeah. And and this that he's he's not the the big dog, but he's like just below the big dog, just as in that. Yeah. Well. So I had big vibes. But a lot better in this one. A lot rain more rained in. Much more rain in. That that then for me at least not as entertaining, but still good, <laughs> still good. Big um, question though, because this really doesn't work. Well, I think at least in in the the what we talked about last time. This that he really chooses his movies and tries for the, going for the Oscar. Oh, yeah, no, the, this, this movie really doesn't fit that narrative at all. No, this feels like an early nineties movie for him. Yeah, it feels like he's either. Doing a favor for someone, uh, or this this is some this is something he would have chosen like in eighty seven. Yeah. 89. No, yeah, and I, I I think that's that, that's the whole thing with because that's why we have so many big name actors and a pretty big budget, forty million. Um, they were banking on this to be like a big success, and it just wasn't. And that's why that's probably why like his agent or he himself thought, no, I should do this. I can get like well. a second billing. Um, in this in this cool crime drama, and then it turned out to be a kind of eh, just okay movie that people forgot about. Yeah. Um, unfortunate since it's been on a pretty good streak so far. Uh, f- uh, uh I mean, f- yeah. if, if you come from Dead Fall forward, you're Red Rock West, Guarding Tess, it could happen to you, Trapped in Paradise. Yeah. None of the movies are great movies, but they are great vehicles. Yeah, for his his uh, for yeah, well for the for the Oscar. Yeah, exactly. So this was just a w- one misstep just before yeah. the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I, I also I think it's it's a horrible name for a movie. Kiss of Death. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, it's one of those I get names, it, but you, yeah, it's just one of those names where you just you instantly he, when you hear it, you instantly think, yeah, that's a sheep crime, boring movie. It's. It sounds like a movie from his um, director DVD. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, his his uh, yeah, his director DVD era. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna read a few from from that from like this is this is talking about between 2007 and 2017. Yeah, did things like Arsenal, Army of One, Dog <laughs> Eat Dog, Left Behind. The frozen ground. This sounds the kiss of death. It sounds exactly like one of those fucking shit yeah. movies. Uh, I, I don't know any of those. I, I read. I've never. I've not seen any of them. They're just going <laughs> but the by names. the names. Yeah, yeah. The na- names. It's just, ugh. And it's I, I think that's why one of the reasons why it didn't work. It's fine, but this goes this goes along with the the theory that this was a big push. Because it premiered in 95, uh, in April of 25 in, in America. And then it was actually shown at the Cannes Film Festival in May 95. And it had a big international release. Like, around the end of May and beginning of June, it was released in Australia, South Korea, France, uh, Finland, Italy, Portugal, Sweden, 26th of May. Um, UK, Germany, Argentina. Um, and then, it, I was looking like, it was, was like a video premiere. Yeah, the only place it didn't show like uh, theatrically just just video premiere was Hungary in October 95 
So they, they, I think they really wanted this to be a big success, and it just didn't really happen. This is a horrible loss. I just looked at the numbers. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I just saw. Jesus. They, it, <laughs> Not yeah, even 15 million worldwide. <laughs> no, 14 million budget didn't even make 15 million. That's yep. just a loss of almost, what is it, like 60%? Yeah, and I mean, if you account, because usually you, you almost you gotta almost double the budget for for marketing and stuff. So let's say it's a yeah, let's based, say, let's on, say based on the marketing like, you said, like every every country and can and all of yes. Yeah, so let, let's let's <laughs> low, let's lowball and say sixty million, yeah. and they made almost fifteen back. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, this was yeah. being pretty big flop. I mean, it doesn't even have a meta score, so there was no big reviews of it back then. Um. <sighs> There are some critic reviews, but that's, you know, smaller stuff. It's not actually on uh, uh, Metacritic. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's kind of... It's an ongoing... We've talked about this before, but even now, up until the very... The movie, right before he, he gets his Oscar, a lot of the movies are just forgotten. And, I yeah. mean, sometimes it's okay, like Firebirds. But, I mean, this isn't bad. People... People should remember this at least. Like it's oh, it's one of those movies. Nicolas Cage was no. Nobody talks about Kiss no. of Death. Nobody talks about Trapped in Paradise. It's really weird. Yeah. I mean, I I was actually thinking of that while I was watching it, and it could be because of like you mentioned his directed DVD era that he just made so many bad movies that people just forgot about his earlier career. Yeah. Again, we talked about this early in this podcast, but he has made this. So many movies, yeah, that you can't really. If, if it's not like something really special, like I don't know. For example, I'm just looking at the list. Uh, like Face Off, which is uh, a good director, or The Rock, which is has the famous um, John Connery in it. Yeah, uh, or Con Air, which is just a fucking memorable weird movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, if it isn't one of those movies that really stand out, it just disappears in all of the other movies. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, his greatest enemy really became himself there yeah. in the in the two thousands. <laughs> yeah, but again, I mean, he made his money. He did his thing. Uh, sure, sure. So, I mean. I just wish I, I, I just wish more people remembered movies like uh, Racing with the Moon or Birdie or uh, well, Racing Arizona is probably one that people remember, but that's more because uh-huh. it's a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah, Red Rock West. Come on, that's Red Rock West. Yes, exactly. Amazing movie, which yeah. has just disappeared. It's in. It's insane. <laughs> um, uh, so. I, yeah, but this movie I'd say is one of those that. Ah, uh, sort of. It's it's okay if this one disappears again. I won't sure. remember this in a few years. No, uh, sure. If you ask me about the kiss of death, I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Uh, I don't know. Which the one? Which one is the, that? Oh, that one. Yeah. Is that, sure. is that the one when he has that weird name, little little something? <laughs> uh, sort of. Um, Big Junior. I, it's a weird name for dancer. <laughs> kind of like yeah. Jumbo Shrimp, huh? <laughs> yeah. But it did have some some memorable things in this movie. Uh, like I. I don't think I've ever seen a, a mob execution by fist before. Yeah, I thought they were going to, like, cut his head off or something. No, they just beat him to death. Just beat him. Nicholas Cage just beats Mike Rapport with a, with his fist until he dies. And I think that's <laughs> fucking brutal. Yeah. Um, so I, that's... And um, uh, I, I think it was a really... I don't know. I, I think it was a really good reveal just how they portrayed it when we realized that Omar was a fed. Yeah. <laughs> when he just got there and, and just screaming at each other. Everyone's yeah, just I mean, screaming. And then just, you, you kind of hear like, nobody told us he was a federal agent. You should have told us common fucking yeah. courtesy. And just, what the fuck? <laughs> From the back, <laughs> David Caruso said, he was a federal agent? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few few pretty good parts. Sure, in the movie. sure. It's just that it's it's more eh parts than bad or good. Yes, the the, the mediocreness takes over. Yeah. Oh, another good one. When you when you think he's going to like burn the hand of the drunk guy at the strip club. <laughs> yeah. And instead he makes him dance up on the stage. He's like <laughs> first of all, that's like a almost like a like they're trying to make him uh, like redeem little junior a little bit. Same same yeah. thing like when when he we he like he bears his soul to to uh, Caruso like oh I can't 
I hate the taste of metal in my mouth, so I need to eat with plastic utensils. <laughs> like, little things like, are we supposed to start to sympathize with him? Yeah, because I, I would say that strips... So, for people who haven't seen this, which I think is most people... Most people? Uh, in the movie, there is... Because the mobs, or, or yeah, Little Junior and Big Junior, they sort of... Their headquarter, or where they, they conduct most of their best business, is in their strip club. Yeah, baby so, cakes. Yeah, so we are... A lot of the movie is in that location, yeah. which also probably is, as you said, that they reuse locations probably because of so they can film everything at the same place, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah. at the same time. Uh, but there's this just in a behind or in the background, there's this guy who's who's sort of grabs at a girl, and yeah. Lil Junior, he Flips he does out. not agree on this. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he he goes on this thing of. Do you know how hard it is to, to work up there? Do you know do you know the guts they that needs? You should, you should show them respect. Yeah. And then he p- puts his hand on the table and then he asks Caruso to light me a cigarette. And you're like, oh, it's gonna, he's gonna it's burn gonna him, burn the hand. And, and I said, like, what are uh, we gonna do about you? And, and then, then we cut see to, him get yeah, up on stage. He gets thrown up on stage in his underwear, and like, no, dance, dance, <laughs> yeah. monkey. And everyone's like, and, yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was thinking, I was like, yeah. I mean, that's cool guy. I think this, this was, uh, was in that uh, in that moment. Very, I was very like, non-violent way to deal with it. it was oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And and again, also just this thing of respecting the workers and being like yeah. a good boss. I was like, huh. So at that point, and again when they when they go on this ride and he talk about the metal in his mouth and all that and yeah. bears his heart, I was thinking, oh, we're gonna have like a, a double double cross here or something. Yeah, he... like I, I can't give him up. We gotta go, yeah. little junior, and they like go on a car chase or something to get away. Man. Who is that? Is that Johnny Brasco? Um, oh. no. Well, he he technically gives them up in the end, but yeah, there's he's very conflicted about. But that's uh, the movie about. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, exactly. exactly. That he almost yeah. becomes part of the mafia while he's undercover. Yeah. 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 So I, I was thinking we're gonna have one of those things because that would be interesting. But the, no, it's just no, no. We just we just released because so oh. that 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 was another thing that was just weird that they sort of tried to give him. They spend a lot of time trying to make us sympathize with a character we shouldn't sympathize with. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah, I mean, they 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 had scenes like all his scenes are like either like this is an insane psychopath that we should fear. And then you have those things like, okay, now he's actually, he's actually kind of a cool guy. So there's never like, you, it's, you never know exactly what to think about the character. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess another memorable scene, one that was, that was downright creepy, um, when uh, they're in they're in witness protection, uh, and he, uh, the first time that Little Junior gets caught. Um, and we have uh, two girls who, who they, they find out where they're hiding. Caruso and his family, where they're hiding. For some reason, they find out, even though they're in witness protection. So there's two girls that drive up to the house in uh, in a car and like ask for, oh, we're looking for this and this place. And the agent's like, oh, it's back from mm. where you came. And uh, Caruso's daughter is sitting on the swings outside of the house. And the guard is well, watching her. But then when he comes back from the car, the daughter is gone. Everyone has started looking for her. And... They found her, they find her out in the woods, and um, she says like I want to I want to talk to mommy. Turns her head, and someone has written in what I assume is supposed to be blood on her forehead, written B A D, which is uh, an acronym that Little Junior uses. It's what is balls attitude and uh, determination. determination. Yeah, it's yeah. his motto, and that was really re- for me at least really creepy. Just yeah. writing in blood on a like four year old's forehead. That was, yeah, and that is just, okay. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and I think that's again. I think it's weird that they they put a lot of thought and a lot of screen time to things that we didn't need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like developing characters that didn't need to be developed. Uh, Especially like Michael that. Rappaport. Like all the scenes in the in the s- s- junkyard with him before he gets murdered. Yeah. Like you have another another um, uh, uh, f- famous actor now, Kevin Corrigan, who's only in one scene where he tries to st- uh, sell a stolen car, and gets right, beaten yeah. with a f- uh, with a bottle by Michael Rapport. Oh. I-, I wonder if if maybe the the thinking was that we weren't supposed to know which side we were going to be and who was going to be alive and who we were supposed to be shocked about when people died because we oh we sp- spent so much time with them and they are yeah. famous people like Helen Pond or 
So, Maybe, but, but then you need, if you're going to do that, you got to go further. And then it's got to be like a two-hour movie where you really yeah. develop the characters. Like, then, then we're going from, from crime thriller to crime epic. And this is not yeah. a crime epic. <laughs> no. So, 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 yeah, that's weird. And I, I think, because I read, after Sun and Moon, I read a little about the original. You hadn't seen the original, right? No, I haven't, I haven't oh. seen it, but I, I've read about it. I think it. there's one plot point in that one which I think would have worked better in this one. And that's yeah. that the wife actually kills herself. Ah, uh, yeah. Because well, because it's uh, it says it kills herself because of depression. Mm. Um, so the original uh, is there's which they they sort of they sort of homage because they mention it sort of, but in this movie, but that he is just a small time crook. He and he does a job in a jewelry shop, robs mm. a jewelry shop. Yeah, and then he get caught. And then he doesn't rat anyone out. No, then he uh, go, gets caught, get into uh, get into prison, and his wife kills himself. And then he rats everyone out. Yes, and exactly. He, and then he gets out, uh, and he remarries someone else, not the nanny, just someone else. Uh. Gets a job and just lives a happy life. But then one of the guys that he ratted out. They are now out from prison, and he thinks they're coming after him. Yeah. So I, th- so it's sort of the same structure, but there's some plot points there. It's it's a it's a little it's more simpler. It, it sounds yeah, it's a little more streamlined. I, I would probably yeah. prefer that act. I'm gonna look that movie up. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And at least just the thing with Rapport and the wife, it just it's all. When we it, talk about it, it, I realized it was a little too long, a little too yeah, yeah, yeah. unnecessary. Like sh- it should have been, it should have been like her, her either either dying in that crash. I mean, they even introduced that she was like a, she's an alcoholic or something. And she's like, oh no, you know I don't drink. But then she she like holds the bottle and she seems all distraught and yeah, I think tries to hide I, it. I, I think there's a lot of hints throughout the movie, which is I don't know why they did that. Uh, but I so Rapport says that they. Uh, Crusoe and Helen Hunt, they were a party couple when they were younger. Right, yeah. They were out partying a lot. And then Crusoe got caught and she got pregnant at the same time. So right. I think that it's like sort of a, a, a connection to their old life as like sort of Bonnie and Clyde criminal party people thing that now tried to settle down. So I think that's the thing with the okay. Alcohol. Yeah. Um or but that yeah. that that drags out the first half of this movie. Yeah. Um, there there's a lot of small things that you need to, to get and they need a lot of time to introduce all these things for just to then say anyway, this is the movie. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and then I'm wondering like is that because cause the movie isn't overly long. It's what's an hour and 39 or 36 or something? Yeah, 140 sort of. Yeah. So I'm wondering then if like they wrote the script and realized that the a, like a regular undercover guy movie, um, w- w- with their script it would have been like 45 minutes. So they were like, oh, shit, we gotta pad this somehow. Um, Michael Rappaport he like uh, starts to grope his his wife when he's in prison, and we should film some more scenes in prison and. Uh, uh, let's add a thing where he beats a guy who tries to sell him a car. Yeah, they just add a little bit, and then they inch their way towards an hour and forty. <laughs> yeah, because if you look at the original movie, let's see how long that is. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's the same hour and thirty nine. Oh, okay, it is. Okay, huh. I was thinking if that was like an hour, because that was sort of movies. Could be an hour back in oh, yeah. 1947. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, weird. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I think, I think, I think you could, like, you could streamline it and just, like, honestly, like, make the original, like, the robbery in the original and the the car delivery thing, turn that into like the first fifteen minutes instead yeah. of five minutes, and like build that up. I gotta say though, I really appreciate that there was sort of no action in this movie. Sure, sure. It's Cause not an I, action movie. Yeah, because I was. It had the feel of a cop action movie, 
and and it really felt like they were just gonna shoehorn in like a car chase at them somewhere in the min in the movie, uh, and I I'm just happy that didn't happen because I sure yeah did not <laughs> need that no uh, I I like that it is sort of a, a low energy movie with again we talk like we get a glimpse from a small time guy in this big big thing with federal agents state agents and mm-hmm. mobsters and all this thing. and he's just one guy and he says uh, he says that somewhere in the movie that people just come to me and ask me for help and whatever I do I only get worse <laughs> and I'm the only one who gets fucked yeah yeah and I, I think that's that's an interesting take because you don't see that often no. You usually see these guys rise to fame or the sure, cop yeah. the good guy winning the Winning the day and all these things, but no, guess, we have this small guy who just tr- tries to get by. Yeah, I, I guess that's where the name comes from. That he, because he says he, he, when uh, when uh, little Junior asks him what what his uh, motto should be, he says, "What about FAB? Fuck that birth." Um, and like so what he says, that, oh, I always help people, and I always only gets gets fucked. Yeah. Um. That, I think that he's it's sort of, sort of like a mark of death, but it's the kiss of death. His his uh, whole life, he's had the kiss of death upon him. I guess that's where the ni- name comes from. But <laughs> yeah. So, so so I appreciate that part of the movie. And sure, yeah. A, another thing with which I think is really nice because again, it's it's kind of sad that it's surprising. <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, I, I went through this entire movie, and I think every move or everything that David Cruz did or his character did, it all made sense. I was never like, "Oh, you idiot! Why do you do this?" Mm, no, every yeah, time, I, every you... time I got it. I just, yeah, yeah, fair. I get it. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. And, and that's again not that common in these kind of movies because there's always that one decision. Yeah, well, somewhere, ah, and you're like, "Oh fuck! Why did you do it? You yeah. know he's an asshole." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's it has an ups and downs. Sure, but it, it's a movie with with uh, potential. It, it could have been oh, definitely a good movie definitely. if there's still little tweaks here and, and there. It it probably already is a good movie. Back in 1947. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, uh, we didn't have any reviews of the from um, back in the day, or uh, nothing. On, like, I mean, there there are reviews, but nothing specific. Let's see. Um, there's a bunch of uh, like blogs and stuff, and a lot of people talking about it when it when it was released on DVD. So mm. nothing, nothing that stick out really. We have um, no, not really, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yep, and on IMDb it's. Five point nine, which yeah. I think is fair. Um, and I I looked over user reviews, but there's nothing really interesting to take. Everyone is saying, "Ah, oh, it's fine." Yeah, <laughs> it's... I saw s- someone like, "Oh, this is too violent," and I was like, "It's not that violent, really." Yeah. The one really violent thing was when he beats Mike Rapport to death, but you actually don't see it; you just see no. him beat something. You don't see him actually no. hit, hit him. And then there's blood, but that's it. Yeah, there's one yeah. guy who gave this a nine out of ten. Whoa! So terrific, terrific ma- mani- maniacal, maniacal gangster performance by Nicolas Cage in a suspenseful, smart gangster story with greasy, true to life dialogues. Nineties gangster class. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, nah. Gonna say, gonna, gonna say a, a no. <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Yeah, yeah no. Okay, there are a few pretty like eight or nines around here. So. Yeah, I mean, and that's no, that's no, always gonna like happen. You no, know? yeah, but no, really low. No, like <laughs> ones or twos. No, no. I mean, yeah, and that's that's usually what happens with these more middle of the road movies. Most people are just gonna give it a five or a six, and then there's gonna be a couple of outliers. Um, when you have a yeah. really good movie or a really bad movie, there's always gonna be extremes. But here, yeah, most of it's in the middle. Nick yeah. Cage at his most evil. If I read here, no, no, no. Watch mm. that fall, please. No. It's it's little Junior ramped up three times as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you you notice that. Well, at this point, when we watched, uh, we watched 
21 movies to Nicolas Cage at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would say that I, I know Nicolas Cage a bit by now. And oh, when yeah. people... You feel the same issue we had when we started this, that a lot of people don't really... I haven't really seen that many Nicolas Cage movies. No. I, if you think, at least... You've uh, seen the classics. Percent, per- percentage of yeah. the movies. Because, um, uh, yeah, again, his most evil. Well... How many have you seen? <laughs> have you seen Co- the Rock Connor face off on this? Is that? And then, sure, yeah. Then he's uh, this is the most evil. But yeah, so... I mean, uh, did did you watch Vampire's Kiss? <laughs> D- did you watch uh, Time to Kill when he rapes a woman? Oh, right. That I just got to mention. That was a a lot of that was a, a very Vampire's Kiss of him when he was jumping in the club. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. When his father died. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got Deadfall vibes, but uh, okay, I got because when he he screamed, "My father died!" It was the same, like <laughs> uh, it was his too I'm a late, vampire. too I'm late. A vampire. <laughs> he, uh, he, sh- he should have done a boo, <laughs> boo. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, vampires kiss. <laughs> and there, there, yeah, there was a lot of. There's a lot of trivia, but nothing interesting. No, I mean, that's the whole thing with this. It's like, eh, not yeah. really interesting. So, at the end of the day, what are you going to give it for score? Um, I'll give it a, a solid five. A solid five. Yeah, yeah. Almost a six, but nah, it's five. Right down the middle of the road. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to give it a six. Alright. It's, yeah, it's, it's a weak six. It's a weak six, but it's just above the line, I'd say. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I uh, wish, I wish, I wish it was better so that David Caruso had an actual film career. Yeah, he, yeah. he did. He did. Uh, I know. Do, do you remember when we saw the movie Session Nine? Oh yeah, yeah. That's because that's, that's David Caruso, almost not in the starring role, but he's like second or third build. Oh. Um, and I really like that one. I like him in that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, I just thought a lot about that because. Uh, I remember because I was really excited. We I was showing it to you and a couple of other friends. I was like, "This is really good horror movie," and I, it didn't go over very well. A lot of <laughs> the, I don't know uh, people weren't weren't super into it. But then there's the scene. Well, it's, it's kind. I guess it's kind of a famous David Caruso scene when he when there's this. He says, "Hey," and there's a zoom in on him, and he puts his finger up towards the guy and he's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> I yeah. thought a lot about that. Like, yeah, he hasn't had the best film career, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I always, when I think of Cruz's film career, I always think of Rambo. All right, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Or, well, technically, First Blood. First Blood, yeah, First yeah. Blood. Because um, that's always the movie I'm, I go for when I think of. Yeah, his he, even he's though he's good in it. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good, but he's not a lot in it. No, no, it's just in the beginning, really. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess. That's Kiss of Death. That's Kiss of Death. Yeah, not more. Not much more to say. It's a pretty standard crime crime thriller. Yeah. Um. Uh, so that's um. Yeah, that's the first movie. We did two movies in '95. This was the first one. The next one is next week. Leaving Las Vegas, which is the end of season one. Of yeah. Nicholas Cage podcast. It's the uh, one that he finally won his Oscar for. Yeah. Like and that kind of kind of really I mean he had he had like we talked about he had really he had established himself in the mainstream up until this point. But I mean if you look at the movies he made after this, that's where you get all the classics. Oh, so yeah. I, I guess you could call it kind of it's like his second break into the mainstream was leaving Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think at this moment he was probably sort of a household name, but he wasn't like recognized as he wasn't he was a star more, yet. No, he was more of... Oh, yeah, it's that guy. I saw him in that other movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I, I I I don't know. I wasn't... I, I didn't really watch a lot of movies at 95. I was six years old. So. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, but uh, that's, I, that's what I think, at least. That people sort of knew who he was, but maybe he wasn't a household name yet. Sure. It was more like a face you recognize more than yeah. a name. And then after leaving him in Las Vegas, he... Exploded and become what we know today. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited for the next season. There's a 
Again, a lot of classics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I haven't seen all of it, but I think I've seen most of them. I yeah yeah. There's some I haven't seen, like Family Man. I actually haven't seen Bringing Out the Dead. Um, I start well, spoilers. I started watching Wind Talkers, but turn it off. So that's <laughs> okay. a that's a spoiler for our thirty fourth episode. Um, but that's uh, that's coming that's coming um, later in twenty twenty two because as you're yeah. listening to this. We are in January, right? Uh, early, yeah. Early, early yeah, January? it should be. Should be January. Just January just started, I think. Yeah. And we we're, we're of course recording this in the middle of November. Um so after leaving Las Vegas, uh we're going to take a little bit of a break over the holidays, but well, even though the holidays have just been when you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Um but we'll be back with with season 2 in the middle of January or towards the end of January. Yeah. Um, but another another uh, announcement to make, I suppose, uh, we're going to have a a guest on the Leaving Las Vegas episode. Yes. No one, no one famous. I guess no one <laughs> no. too famous. I don't no. know the person yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a friend of mine who, yeah. even like from the f- beginning of this podcast, said uh, she said I got it, I got it beyond for Leaving Las Vegas. Um, yeah. So yeah, special guest for. Special guest for the end of uh, season one, and then we'll be back in late January. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Once again, check us out on all the major podcast platforms. And if you want the episodes in advance, it's uh, patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Just three bucks a month. And, uh, yeah. Once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye, everyone. Madness in the Method is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It is hosted by Tobias Vedin and Christopher Billian. Editing and directing by Tobias Vedin. Executive producer is Annika Vedin. A huge thank you to all our Patreons over on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Rasmus Jonsson, Laura Kinney, Mom and Dad.